This is our Earth, the third planet of the Sol system. Its radius is 6,370 kilometers. This is the composition of the Earth. It consists of 1% crust, 84% mantle, and 15% core. Of the core itself, only 29% is the inner core, which is the deepest part of the Earth. The rest of it, 55%, is the outer core. The crust is where we live and breathe. It is consisted of 55% continental plate, which is land, and 30% oceanic plate, which is the sea bottom. Shortly, we will cut the earth open and delve into the depths of what caused the continental drift. But what is, continental drift? According to Wikipedia, continental drift is the movement of the earth's continents relative to each other, thus appearing to drift across the ocean bed. Now we will cut the earth open to reveal how the layers are stacked. Here we can see in more detail that it consists of the inner and outer core, lower and upper mantle, and the crusts. The trench is a part of the crust. We'll only discuss the things that affect the continental drift. The upper mantle, or as known as the asinosphere has a density of 3.4 to 4.3 grams per cc. Its thickness is between 80 and 200 kilometers thick, and its temperature ranges from 1400 degrees Celsius to 3000 degrees Celsius. Its lower parts are solid because there is so much pressure. Next we'll discuss the crust, which is also called the lithosphere. The first one that we will take care of is the upper part of the lithosphere, called the continental crust, or sile. It has a density of 3.4 to 4.3 grams per cc, and its thickness varies between 5 and 70 kilometers. The next one is the lower part of the lithosphere, which is called the sema. Its density is 2.9 grams per cc, and some parts of it is less than 10 kilometers thick. So we've seen the parts of the earth. But actually what caused the drift? Well, we can visualize the earth's crust like icebergs, and the asinosphere as the ocean. It slowly drifts with the sea. Next, we will see the effects of the tectonic plates movement. Here we can see the changes on the positions of the Earth's plates through the years, starting with late Proterozoic, 600 million years ago. Latest Proterozoic, 560 million years ago. Early Cambrian, 540 million years ago. Late Cambrian, 500 million years ago. Middle Ordovician, 470 million years ago. Late Ordovician, 450 million years ago. Silurian, 430 million years ago. Early Devonian, 400 million years ago. Late Devonian, 370 million years ago. Mississippian, 340 million years ago. Pennsylvanian, 300 million years ago. Early Permian, 280 million years ago. Late Permian, 260 million years ago. Between the Permian and the Triassic era, there exists a supercontinent named Pangaea, which is all of our current continents in one. Early to Middle Triassic, 240 million years ago. Late Triassic, 220 million years ago. Early Jurassic, 200 million years ago. Middle Jurassic, 170 million years ago. Late Jurassic, 150 million years ago. Early Cretaceous, 120 million years ago. Late Early Cretaceous, 105 million years ago. Late Cretaceous, 90 million years ago.
Cretaceous tertiary, 65 million years ago. After the Cretaceous era, a big asteroid struck the nowadays Mexico, and caused the mass extinction that wiped the dinosaurs off the face of the Earth, also known as the Cretaceous tertiary extinction. Eocene, 50 million years ago. Oligocene, 35 million years ago. Miocene, 20 million years ago. Pleistocene, 50,000 years ago. And the present. Shortly, we will begin the re entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Hope this video helps your understanding of continental drift, and if there's any suggestions, leave it in the comments below.